James, what's your moment of the weekend? That is the St. Crispin's Day speech from Henry V, which, of course, the Court of Nord, the Lazio Ultras referenced wow. in their big scenografia mm. before one of the most memorable Derby della Capitale that I can remember. That is football James. heritage. That is real football heritage. Nice. Um, not only for what happened on the pitch, right. but what happened off the pitch. Off the pitch. And I imagine Probably we'll more get into that one we'll talk pitch, about. Actually. More, yeah, because there was... Go on, do it now. Okay, so you had Jose Mourinho, who was banned from the sideline, uh, apparently turning up at full time, yeah. being in the locker room, and then looking out of the locker room and seeing Lazio's owner, Claudio Lotito. Mm, and short little guy. Short loves little quoting guy, Latin. Loves quoting Latin. A little bit pompous. <laughs> Probably the most powerful man in Italian football as well. And uh, it's alleged that Mourinho looks at him and says, Ma che cazzo guardi? What the f*** are you looking at? Damn. And then Lotito, yeah. it's alleged, yeah. hits back with, Ma che cazzo guardi tu? Mm. Sta casa mia. Yeah. What the f*** are you looking at? This <laughs> right. is my house. Damn. And then there was scuffles, altercations, Ooh. including uh, Roma's centre-back Gianluca Mancini. Again, alleged that he... Runs out of the locker room. Naked. In a state of undress. Naked. <laughs> is he naked? Is he half naked? It depends on which report you read. To confront Alessio Romagnoli. Oh, right. I love it. Romagnoli. Well or not? A former Roma Academy graduate who obviously went to AC Milan. But really, he's always been a Lazio fan. Mm. And, uh, and they were really rubbing it in because in the week. Wow. Well. <laughs> <laughs> in the week. When uh, Roma progressed in the Europa League and Lazio went out of right. the Conference League, right. Jose Mourinho, apropos of nothing, said, uh, ah, there's no third competition for Lazio, is there? Such a shame. Right. A real shame. And so Romagnoli, after Lazio beat Roma in the derby, he says, there's no third derby for Roma, is there? Mm. Such a shame. Oh. Such a shame. First derby you know, double since 11-12? Yeah. yeah. yeah wow. I enjoyed the game, but I'd have rather had 90 minutes of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then later on in the evening, we had the Derby d'Italia, which, a bit like the Roman affair, featured uh, finished 1 0 uh, with a flurry of red cards. Yeah, not uh, always for people who are on the pitch as well, which mm. was uh, very much a theme of the weekend. Um, but uh, proper Juve performance. Proper. This, you know, when. When you feel it, when you see it, you yeah. know what it is. And that was just, yeah. uh, you've been back to... You mean dodgy decisions? Yeah, and yeah a bit of cheating. Weird penalties. You know, with yeah. the referee well, yeah. and as balls. It happens, <laughs> as it happens, there was <laughs> the one goal featured three, three handballs. Hand I mean, <laughs> three handballs, but they didn't have much of a chance to go over it. <laughs> Which, before, four minutes. They had a four minutes of, and uh, Simone Inzaghi, the Inter coach, who will be in the Champions League final, said afterwards that uh, this is unacceptable, that... Uh, after the injustice that Inter suffered in Monza when they had a goal disallowed, which uh, I think would have made it uh, 3-1 to Inter, and instead they ended up drawing that game 2-2, that uh, enough is enough. Um, and I think he was deflecting from the fact that, okay, that was the deciding goal, but uh, Juventus were by far uh, the better team on the night and felt like a complete performance. Okay, there could have been more goals, um, but certainly Soule had chances in the first half. But uh, just to see sort of Juventus midfield players throwing their bodies on the line, like Locatelli to block that shot from Chalanolu, Bremer, who's probably still got Lukaku and Lautaro in his pocket right now. Um, it was uh, it was very encouraging to see. And, you know, Allegri keeps saying that we are really second, you know. Mm. we are, yeah, Just because we got this 15-point penalty, we are the second best team in Italy at the moment. And they hope that on April 19th, when this decision will be made, which is incidentally, I think the same day as the sporting game, which has not Ooh. escaped the attention of the uh, Juventus executives. Mm. So why are you going to take a decision when we've got a big game in yeah. Europe? Um, but certainly the way Allegri is talking, saying we are second, projects a, a level of confidence right. that they can maybe get this overturned. Even if it doesn't get overturned, you kind of back them to make the top four, the way not only they're picking up results and clean sheets, that's five in a row now in the league, but also the teams above them are dropping points. In this case, Inter at the hands of Juventus, Inter slipping out of second place with Lazio taking over the spot right behind Napoli, but also Roma who were beaten by a Lazio. Milan defeated 3-1 by Udinese. 
Yeah, Milan, very worrying form in 2023. Uh, in fact, if the season had started then, which it didn't, but some people do tables like this, they would be mm. 13th, 13th in this calendar year, James. Oh. Remember when Stefano Pioli, after Milan beat Tottenham at San Siro, he said, Milan are cured. You know, we've changed system to a back three. We're solid again. We've got Mike Maignan back. Kind of overlooked the fact that they weren't really controlling games in midfield because Tonali is one of the most overhyped players um, of, of that generation. Leao does not really suit playing as a centre forward when his best form has always been out on the left-hand side. Um, and it's been a real missed opportunity this past week for them because, OK, you can, you can account for them drawing in Florence uh, against a good Fiorentina side, but to uh, draw at home against Salernitana um, to uh, to lose this game against Udinese in Udine. Um, Udinese hadn't won at home in six months. Um, and, yeah, pretty concerning, really, mm. considering how tight everything is. And like a new signing, that's Latan Ibrahimovic. Yeah. Who started at the age of 41. Bless. It, it, they gave him a penalty. He, he kind of <laughs> hid it straight at the keeper there. Have another one, Zlatan. And he put that away. <laughs> he did. Joyful scenes. He did. Yeah. Um, I mean, I remember it wasn't last season because he spent all of last season now injured practically. Um, but the season before that, he was, you know, throwing his authority around and saying, you know, I should be the penalty taker. But he kept missing them, even though they had Frank Kessie. Uh, and Kessie has a really, really good record from the spot. Kessie, of course. Seriously? Yes. Yeah, he's, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Never misses. Kessie was sensational. So, um, when he missed that first penalty, it was a reminder. Ah, yeah, Slatan in mm. his forties, not that good at penalties. Um, but yeah, became the oldest ever player to score in Serie A. But Who um, did he beat? Billy Costa Cota. Right. Yeah, a lot of people would probably thought Totti, but no, Billy. Uh, yeah. um, well. I'm not sure penalty counts should count for those records. Yeah, no. I'm with you, Jules. And with you, Jules. Uh, and yeah, just a final thought on Milan's problems. You know, if you want to be a High pressing side, which they were when they won the league, then yep. having a 41 year old up front is no. is not really the way to go. The Totally Football Show podcast is available three times a week, bringing you all the football news you could reasonably be expected to care about. We've got views, we've got stats, we've got analysis, we've got some of the best football writers around, and the whole thing is absolutely free. So have a listen on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or all the usual places by clicking on the link below.